Bob and Cherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Cherry. Hey, got it, Friday! Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th. How far is it to Camp Crystal Lake? Never come back again. It's got a death curse. Oh! Jason was my son, and today is his birthday, sweet, innocent Jason. Ah! And now, from the palatial Bob and Sherry Studios, where it is always Friday the 13th. Yeah, man, you're looking at that old Freaky Friday or something, man. It's Bob and Sherry. (laughs) Oh, happy Friday the 13th, and we're kicking it off in true Friday the 13th fashion. We just lost Bob, so he's probably rebooting his computer so he can join us again. Do you know... Uh, coming up on today's show, of course, we have the People's Movie Critic. He's reviewing Suicide Squad. Um, do you know that there are some things that actually happened on Friday the 13th that are unbelievably creepy? Like, for example, you know that famous plane crash in the Andes with the soccer team? Yes. Where 12 people were killed instantly when the plane crashed at the, in these isolated, snow-locked Andes Mountains. And the survivors resorted to cannibalism. Do you know that that happened on Friday the 13th, 1972? I didn't know that that had happened on that day, but there's been on, movies about it. On that day. Um, and there was another uh, like creepy thing that happened on Friday the 13th. This was way back in the day, Friday the 13th, 1829. There's this gentleman named Sam Patch. And he had jumped off of Niagara Falls and into the Niagara River and survived. He was like a legend. The man that survived diving into Niagara Falls. So Friday the 13th, 1829, Sam Patch and an audience of 10,000 people assemble at the Genesee, at the Genesee Falls in New York State. And Folks who grew up in the Northeast are thinking, is that why they named that nasty beer Genesee? It was the first thought that I had. Is that where that came from? Oh, wow. That's where Jenny Jenny Cream Cream Ale gets its name. Um, So 10,000 people are gathered to watch this extraordinary man who survived diving into the Niagara Falls. He jumped out off of the Genesee Falls into New York's Genesee River. And you know what? He did not get lucky twice. And an audience of 10,000 people were there. Friday the 13th. Aren't you back in trouble doing it on Friday the 13th? Friday the 13th. I mean, Here's they- one. Here's one that happened just a few years ago. Friday the 13th. In August 2010. A 13-year-old boy was struck by lightning at 1313 military time on Friday the 13th. He survived unharmed. That is some Friday the 13th stuff. How about Friday the 13th, 1989? It was this back then, it's changed now, but back then, that was the second worst day in the history of the stock market when it oh, dropped. I remember that. That's right. How about. Friday the 13th, 1979, guy named Bob Renfrey decided after this day that I'm about to describe you, after this day, he has spent every Friday the 13th in bed. He won't get out of bed on Friday the 13th. Um, up to that day when he decided to take to his bed in 1979, on Friday the 13th, one year he walked through a plate glass door. The next year he got fired. Another Friday the 13th, he accidentally hit his wife in the head with a stick that he was throwing to the dog. She ended up in the hospital. Another Friday the 13th, his wife fell down a flight of stairs and was hurt. To Mm. this day, the man Mm. does not get out of bed. He stays Mm. in bed. And we can do one more for you. She fell down the flight of steps. She got hit in the head by something he threw. Hmm. It's starting to look like we need to get Keith Morrison Mm. up in here, isn't it? Want one more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was in 1951 on Friday the 13th. Days and days and days of rain fell in northeastern Kansas. Rivers poured over their banks. And on Friday the 13th, July, it was in the summertime, 1951, the rivers flooded and gobbled up Topeka, Lawrence, and Manhattan, Kansas, all on Friday 
the 13th. Oh, and I will mention before we break that the founder of the Ku Klux Klan, Nathan Bedward Forrest, oh, founder yes. of the KKK, Mr. Mr. White Sheets are always in season. He was born on Friday, July 13th, 1821. Y'all be careful today. This day is powerful. We got morons in the news coming up. We got the People's Movie Credit. Woo! Don't walk under any ladders. It's Bob and Sherry. Swag you can use. Just hit shop at bobandsherry.com. Well, here's a story out of uh, King County in Seattle area of Washington that will get your attention. And Bob, I really want you to listen to this because this is what Max and I are talking about when we say do not antagonize other drivers on the road. I'm going to, I'm, I, I could tell you the story, but I think I'm just going to tell you what the King County Sheriff's Office released. And there's video that goes with this. There's dash cam video, which um, if you if you want, I can post it on our Facebook. But anyway, here's what the King County Sheriff's Office in Washington State released. Quote, road rage is real, especially when some whacked out driver throws a hammer and axe at your windshield. Wow. Whoa. Af- okay, thank you. On the afternoon of July 27th, King County Sheriff's Office deputies responded Um, to a call to investigate a road rage incident, and the video nearly says it all. The driver of this Jeep, according to incident reports, began honking at the victim as they merged onto I-5, the I-5 on-ramp. As they traveled northbound, the Jeep's driver continued to honk. The victim took the Ballinger Way exit to avoid a freeway confrontation. Moments later, the Jeep passed the vehicle, blocked him on the roadway, and the driver hurled a hammer and then fled and an axe. Using additional surveillance, King County detectives identified the Jeep's driver. They learned that only three days after this incident, he was apprehended for multiple felonies after fleeing from deputies in Snohomish County. It's easy to find and charge a suspect when they're already in jail. Um, If you believe you may be in a road rage incident, please consider driving to the nearest police or fire stations. Most suspects go where they believe they won't get caught. So the victim had dash cam uh, for whatever reason. And um, here's, here's, what, here's what happened. When you watch the video, you see the suspect block the road ahead of the car near a gas station. You see the suspect get out of the vehicle on the driver's side. And as the victim is frantically putting the car in reverse, the man hurls an ax at her. The ax flies through the air, smashes into the victim's windshield, glances off, but you can see that it sends shockwaves through the car. There's dust flying in the air. The, the victim is continuing to try to get away from the scene. And the man who hurled the ax at the person is shown getting back into his car. And because it is summertime in America, that man is not wearing his shirt, which is a perfect opportunity for local news to get on out there with a truck. So that, so the, that vid- went down. the video shows all of that. Yep. Video shows wow. all of it. Yeah. Well, that that does get your attention. I mean, I don't want nobody throwing an axe at me, for sure. Um, was was the woman driving the car able to back it up uh, pretty quickly? The whole thing went. The, that's the problem with these kind of incidents. Like you yeah. think that you think that you have more time than you do to respond right. to a shirtless lunatic hur- hurling an axe at you. The problem is, is that you. You don't expect that, so you're not ready for it. And all of this, this man who's now in jail, right? He's jailed and charged with multiple felonies in two mm-hmm. counties. All of this drama because they had a tight merge onto the interstate. This wasn't even like, I cut you off and I said your mama was ugly and that your baby looks like a chipmunk. This was, <laughs> we were merging onto the interstate and it didn't go, you know, as as ideally as you might have hoped. That was enough for this guy to hunt this vehicle down and throw an ax at it. You know, with the merging thing, sometimes there are people that are just blatantly rude. And they, they've been in the right lane going crazy while you're waiting in the left lane, lane you know, slowly going ahead. And then they cut in. And, and, you know, it does tick you off. Other times, you know, people get caught in the right-hand lane and they go, oh, I have to merge left. And what are you going to do? You've got to get in there somehow. I wonder which one of those was the situation here. 
I don't know, but I can't it's think wrong. of a I can't think of a merging incident, Paul Bunyan, that requires you to rip off your shirt and hurl an axe at somebody. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it was a tight merge. There was heavy traffic. Yeah. I almost I almost I, said a different word than I was going to use. Things were hard. It was aggravating and difficult. And it's happened to all of us. It probably happens to somebody listening right now almost every day. And you don't yeah. pull your car over and take your shirt yeah. off and go after somebody with an axe. <laughs> oh, he wasn't taking it off. It was off. He was driving with it off. We all know that guy. America... We have got to behave. We are being... It's sassy chair time. <laughs> yeah. Don't make There's me say it again. There's a lot going on. There's yeah, a lot if somebody was just right. courteous in traffic and saw a signal and let him in, this all would have been avoided. Just simple courteousness. <laughs> and, and who carries an axe around in their car? I we, mean, I have we, one, but it's in my garage. We have discussed that when someone is coming at you with an axe, yeah. you're you're in crazy territory. There's no negotiating with someone <laughs> mm-hmm. using an axe. That's right. So we're going to do morons in the news next. And our moron of the day today is not even human. And you, this is a face you must see. We're going to send it to your phone when you text the word moron to 888-262-7437. It's next. It's Bob and Sherry. Morons in the News is sponsored by NHTSA. Bob and Sherry. You idiots. Here they are. He's a moron. He's acting like a complete idiot. Morons in the News. Sean Hayes allegedly caused a real disturbance at a public supermarket on Palm Beach Boulevard in Florida. He was screaming. He was swearing at people. He pushed over some uh, products. And uh, then he left. He put his hands up in the air and he left on a moped. Just took off on a moped. Well, uh, they called the police, and Sean Hayes was pulled over shortly after the disturbance. And the police said, yeah, we need to talk to you, Sean. And Sean said, no, you don't. I'm with the FBI. And then the police said, really? And he said, yeah. Well, And they said, let me see your badge. And he said, I'm not carrying it with me, but here's my FBI number. 37402. And they said, yeah, I don't think so. You're under arrest for causing a disturbance. Let me just say, folks, I know the FBI has been under a lot of scrutiny and a lot of pressure. I like the FBI personally, but they're not under such pressure that they have asked their agents to ride on mopeds. They're still in regular cars. You will not see an FBI agent going up to the scene of a crime on a moped. Okay. Uh, when you said Sean Hayes, I thought it was the guy from the Will and Grace. The actor from Will and Grace. Right? Yes, I know. So I'm, I know. imagine there goes Sean Hayes. He's going on a moped. There he goes. Different, different Sean Hayes completely. Right. Well, moving on. If you have never texted the word moron to 888-262-7437, Today is the day you're going to want to do it for the first time because you have got to see this fish. This is a fish from your nightmares. It was caught by a fisherman at Jeanette's Pier in North Carolina. It's a fish with human teeth. It's a real fish, and those are real teeth. You can't believe it. Let me see. Oh, my God, it is. And it's smiling in the picture. It's hysterical. So let me tell you about this fish. It's a yeah. sheep's head fish. Its uh-huh. um, official name is Archosargus probidosopolis. It's also known as a convict fish because it has dark stripes on its body that look like an, an old-timey prison jumpsuit. But anyway, it swims along the Atlantic coast. Um, it gets to about three feet long, so it's a big boy with those big teeth. And it eats like all sorts of stuff. Plants, clams, oysters, shrimp. Folks, and, you've got to see this. Teeth those teeth are people teeth. They, they are human teeth. They are big human teeth. I, I, I must say they're getting a little yellow. He could he could use some veneers. He could use some zoom whitening, okay? Yeah, right, so, exactly. So I know that when you look at this fish, when we send this to your phone, um, you're going to be afraid to ever get in the water again. But actually, <laughs> these fish are no threat to humans unless you're really, really harassing them. And according wow. to David Catania who is um, at the California Academy of Sciences. He's an expert in fishes. He says, these are also good to eat. So not only are you fine to swim with them, but if you want to capture one, 
you're gonna you're gonna want to eat it. Now here's the problem: if you pull this thing up and it smiles at you, you're not gonna be able to eat it. <laughs> text the word text the word moron to eight 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 two six two seven four three seven. We'll zip it on out to your phone, and you'll be automatically registered to win a bottle of People Make Me Sick, the official hand sanitizer of the Bob and Sherry Show. Still to come, the People's Movie Critic and his review of Suicide Squad. Get the moron of the day by texting moron, moron. to eight 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 Bob. Sherry. Every once in a while, you'll discover something, especially with access to the internet, you know, that you never knew was going on. And I found this thread that was being used between a variety of women. It's, I think there were about 16 women on this thread, and they were all doing the same thing. They set up a phantom male that they would refer to in their business. So, In other words, I'll just read one of them. I have a female friend. This is from someone named Deborah. Uh, She is self-employed. She always refers to Mr. Nash as her boss with her clients, who are almost always men. She says, I have to check with Mr. Nash on that matter. He does not exist. He's totally a phantom. And she says, (laughs) it works fantastic. Uh, Another woman said, I had an invisible junior uh, architect named Greg working for me for a while. He had a desk all set up. He was, if they came to our office, he was always at the customer site. He had a phone (laughs) number. Greg had voicemail. Greg had an email account. And he got accolades for his efficiency. It's woman after woman, and and some of them are different reasons. Like one woman was really hard, really tired of getting hit on on the telephone, and so she just had um, her version of Greg uh, with a voicemail, and she would send these guys over to to Greg, and then they would straighten up and show more respect because they knew there was a guy sitting right next to her. Um, let me see who else. When I self-published a comic book, this is from Lisa, I got letters where people argued with me trying to get a free book, even lying and saying that they paid. I wrote back using a fake mail mail email. Darius Jackson, head of orders department. They always (laughs) ended up respecting Darius Jackson. Isn't that a hoot? It's a hoot, but it's also kind of like... Yeah. And it makes me furious, but yes, it's yeah. a hoot. Yeah. There, there was one woman who would, uh, her name was Nicole, and she, she had a professor when she was in college that she would have to submit, you know, um, papers to. She got kicked back an awful lot when she uh, submitted as Nicole. When she submitted as Cole, she didn't have any problems at all. <sighs> yeah. That doesn't, now that one surprises me least of all. Yeah. This one is from St. Pauli Girl, and she says, My mother changed her name, ch- literally changed and legally changed her name to Scott Kayla before law school. So her mother, this goes back for a while, her mother says, I'm not going to be Catherine. My name is going to be Scott. I knew, I knew a female Scott once. So anyway, she changed her name to Scott before law school and just submitted everything as Scott. And she kept it up into her practice, too. Many a prosecutor was surprised when she showed up in court because they Mm. thought, oh, I'm going up against uh, this guy named Scott. That is I had no idea that that was a thing. It's brilliant. I can only imagine how outraged and insulted and ticked off you would be if you had to pretend to be Catherine. In I order know. to be taken seriously at work. But you know, you know what? That that woman, especially back then, this was probably 20 plus years ago. She was saying, nothing is going to stop me from succeeding. Even if I have to play. She's just saying, this is the hand that I'm dealt and I'm going to play around it and I'm going to yeah. win. And if that was the hand that you were dealt, you'd be furious if you had to pretend to be Veronica in order to get a phone call returned. Like, it's kind of infuriating. I'm just going to be honest. It's really infuriating. I understand that. I I just, I think it's so interesting. This one woman named Kat said, we did this at my last company because we were female owned and operated. John always sent the invoices and booked the meetings and we got paid more quickly. 
Mm-hmm. This is what this is what some women have got to go th- go through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it, and some of it has nothing to do with work. Like I can't tell you how many women I have known and know now who are single, who have to um, pretend that there's a man somewhere around for safety reasons. Yeah, and in yeah, fact, when um, when my girls headed out on their epic van life camping road trip a week uh, or so ago, uh, my husband told them, just make sure that, you know, you, you, if you feel uneasy that you say something like, when's dad coming back or uh, something along those lines so that people think mm-hmm. there's a, a man with you. And mm-hmm. it's what kind of, I mean, that's the world we live in, right? It's like, the world like, how we awful live in. Yeah. is that? How it is terrible. Is it, it is terrible. And, and you know, Kevin is right. W- weren't we talking about this about a week ago where there was a safety expert? She was a woman and she would uh, she would lock her door. She lived in like a in, in a brownstone in uh, probably somewhere like Brooklyn. And she would lock her door. If there were people outside, she would say, Billy, I'll be right back. And she every single time she left. So that they knew that, you know, if they yeah. broke in and were going to be waiting for her for some reason, there's a guy in there. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it is sad. It is very, very sad. You know, it's a funny thing. uh, Getting back to the business part of it, I just as soon deal with a woman, you know, as I would as I would a guy, you know, with a guy, sometimes he's going to get puffed up and there's going to be, you know, you know, a macho thing between two guys going back and forth. Women, they just want to get the job done most of the time. I'm not saying there's yeah. no, there's not some Karens out there, but I mean, for the most part, the very uh, the very efficient. Most of the women that we uh, have worked with, not all, but most of the women that we've worked with in radio over the years with various companies, have been really good leaders. It doesn't happen anymore, but for a very long time, uh, Bob and I would walk into a room, and I was always the only woman in the room, and the men would address every comment and question to Bob. And, and I would, um, you know, be checking, like playing a game on my phone because I wasn't included. And that changed. Yeah. It changed gradually it and then it changed all at once. And now it doesn't yeah. really happen at all. It doesn't but, register mm-hmm. at all. Well, I mean, you have taken over the running of this, of the business itself. But in those situations, I could remember after the third question, I would say, uh, what do you think, Sherry? Or they would start, they would look at me with a question and I would just, I would look at you so that their eyes would transfer over to you. And then they would look at me and I would just smile inscrutably. Yeah, we had a lot of, um, we had a lot of meetings where Bob was like, damn girl, that was uncomfortable. But yeah. you know, that's the, that's the world. And after a while as a woman, you just sort of get used to it. And then, then you do what you have to do to get ahead. You invent Greg or Scott or whatever. And yeah. a lot of times now when I'm doing business with someone who doesn't really know who I am, I just use an initial and my last name. And then, right, you right. know, you get what you get. It's yeah. this world, y'all. Can we just not all be nicer to each other and also wash our hands after we use the bathroom and close our mouths when we chew? If we could go. just do those basic things, be what better. a time we'd have. All right, straight ahead. We have comedian Tommy Drake. We have the People's Movie Critic reviewing Margot Robbie and Suicide Squad. It's Bob and Sherry. I live in a world of sound. I have earbuds in all the time. Earbuds for work. Earbuds when I'm out walking with the dog. Earbuds when I'm cleaning the house. And since I've discovered Raycon wireless earbuds, I'm really a happy camper. And here's why. A couple of reasons. First, Raycons are super comfortable. They have the perfect snug in-ear fit. They don't stick out at all. You honestly forget you're wearing them. Never thought I'd be able to say that about in-ear earbuds. And they have incredible sound. And they cost about half the price of other premium audio brands. And wait for this a 32 hour battery life. So you pop your Raycons in and you get on with your day and you're not constantly worried about having to recharge and, and stop what you're doing. And with Raycons, whether you're listening to music or a podcast with Raycon or the radio with Raycons, you've just got crisp, beautiful, clear sound. And again, at about half the price of other premium audio brands. And if you've never tried wireless earbuds and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to love that. The Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee, so you really can't lose. You give them a try, you'll see what I mean. You're going to love the battery life. You're going to love the sound quality. You're going to love the comfortable fit. You're going to love the price. You can create your very own soundtrack to the day with Raycon. Right now, Bob and Sherry listeners can take 15% off their Raycon order at buy, B-U-I, Raycon.com slash Sherry. 
That's buyraycon.com slash Sherry. You'll save 15% on your whole order. So when the world gets crazy, you pop in your Raycons and you tune it out to your own private soundtrack. 15% off buyraycon.com slash Sherry. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I bet it can be hard work at times. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. It's the Bob and Sherry Store Sizzling Summer Sidewalk Sale. Everything in stock is on sale 10% off. 10% off. Including Sherry Lynch's cookbook, Cooking with Cats, and swag you can use, like Bob and Sherry 24-ounce latte mugs, travel mugs, H2Go water bottles, and our very hot line of Mother of All Mothers merch, including tote bags, candles, wear around tea and sleep shirts. 10% off. It's the sizzling summer sidewalk sale. Everything is 10% off. Just hit shop at bobandsherry.com and use the discount code podcast at checkout. Bob and Sherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Sherry. It is time now for Everyone Needs a Laugh, sponsored by Panera. Today, our comedian is Tommy Drake. It's a pleasure to perform in front of comedy fans like you guys. Sometimes I get invited to perform at company parties, corporate events. Those are no fun. Everybody's uptight. They're in a work environment. Try to price myself out of those shows, you know? (laughs) The last one I did was for the employees of Sam's Club. They only needed one show, but I made them buy 12 of them. (laughs) I am a married guy, so if you want to hang out with me socially, I can either show up on time or I can bring my wife. Some people think that joke's mean-spirited. I want you to know that's our love language. That's how we say I love you. We tease each other, but she is way better at teasing me than I am at teasing her. The other night, she turned to me. She goes, I can't sleep. Start doing your act. (laughs) It sounds harsh, but it works for us. I know it's not a record, but I'm I'm proud to tell you guys, my wife and I have been married for 24 years now. I think that's a pretty good run, yeah. Just last week, Facebook congratulated us on nine years of friendship. (laughs) I didn't know Facebook knew that much about my marriage. (laughs) No kids, women have a maternal instinct. My wife's best friend had a baby. My wife went over to her friend's house, held a two-week-old sleeping baby for 20 minutes. She comes home, she wants a baby. I called her friend. I said, next time, let her hold the flat screen TV. (laughs) Because I've been thinking about it, and I'm ready. (laughs) I'm constantly failing as a husband. My wife will give me the simplest chore. I'm going to mess it up. She sent me to the store to get her deodorant. I couldn't find her brand. How am I supposed to find something that's invisible, unscented, and secret? (laughs) There's no sharing in my marriage. We don't share anything. I sleep on the right side of the bed. My wife sleeps in the middle. (laughs) Then she has the nerve to complain in the morning. How come all the covers are on your side of the bed? Because all the people are on my side of the bed. Kind of interesting, my wife is 12 and a half years older than me, yeah. My wife is what they call a cougar. Which means that when she caught me, I was the slowest of my herd. (laughs) Women always want to talk to me about the age difference. Some of them are mad about it. I had a lady come up to me, she goes, I don't understand your marriage. What could you two possibly have to talk about? We have twice as much to talk about. We're from two different generations. We could teach each other stuff the other one didn't learn growing up. My wife taught me all about Watergate and Nixon resigning. And I taught her how to find the warp zones on Super Mario Brothers. (laughs) We have a lot in common. Music, I'm a big Beatles fan. She was alive when they were together. (laughs) I want my wife to have whatever she wants. 
My wife won't tell me what she wants. That'd be too easy. She wants me to guess. I'm not a good guesser, so she gives me clues. It's my job to figure them out. My marriage is like an episode of CSI where they never catch the killer. Never's an exaggeration. Sometimes she gives me a clue. I figure it out. It makes me feel like a good husband. A few years back, we're at the movie theater watching a movie called Burlesque. There's a scene in the middle of this movie where everybody sings the song, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. My wife whispers in my ear, this is my favorite song, and Christmas is coming up. So I bought her the soundtrack. <laughs> she was speechless. <laughs> oh, he's wonderful. That is comedian Tommy Drake. You can watch his set and all the comics we feature on the show at B-O-B-A-N-D-S-H-E-R-I.com. Just click more stuff from the show and look for Everyone Needs a Laugh. Coming up, we've got the People's Movie Critic. And this week, he is reviewing Suicide Squad. It's Bob and Sherry. Leave us a talk back. Talk back with the free Bob and Sherry app. Well, uh, we do the oddcast every week on the Bob and Sherry show. As a matter of fact, a couple of times a week. And it's different from the regular show because we pick subjects that perhaps take a little more time to get into. And I'll just be honest, sometimes the language is a little saltier than you would hear on the broadcast version of the Bob and Sherry show. I'm trying to clean up my language a little bit because I've noticed that here in America, we have become very casual using uh, swear words. And so I I thought it was um, an interesting article that somebody put together some fantastic insults and there is no swearing that is involved. All right. Do we have a little music for the background for this, Max? There we go. Very good. Okay. So here's the first one. The first one is actually straight from Shakespeare. I wish we could, I wish we could become better strangers. Think about that one. For oh, isn't that cool? You're impossible to underestimate. <laughs> this is from a teacher, and this is really harsh. A teacher said to a kid, nothing you have to say is of any consequence to anyone. I would say I- that's a teacher at the end of the year, and he or she is fed up with whoever this kid is. Even if that were true of my child if a teacher said that to my kid we we'd have to have a meeting about that I know. because that's yeah. the kind of thing that for some people that it rolls off their back and for other right. people it leaves a scar that becomes a ditch that they can't climb out of for their whole life totally i totally agree with you our next one i can explain it to you but i can't understand it for you Ooh. You sound like a pizza cutter. All edge, no point. Mm. As an outsider, what's your perspective on intelligence? <laughs> That's the, I this, think this that may one. be the worst one so far. Mm. Oh, where do you hear this? Anyone who ever loved you was wrong. <laughs> oh, that's awful. <laughs> How about a little Judge Judy with an insult? If you were the prize at the end of my race, I would walk backward. I can, wow. I can hear her. I can hear her doing that. I once saw a comment that read, the bar was so low, it was practically a tripping hazard in hell. And yet, here you are, limbo dancing with the devil. Wow. That one is <laughs> It took a lot of thought to craft oh, together. It does. It does. Uh, this one person says, a guy who sat behind me in English class let out a you-know-what that reverberated off a wooden seat. The whole class heard it, and the teacher said, that was the most intelligent thing you've said all year. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. I think you should carry a potted plant to replace the oxygen you waste. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I would insult you, but I'm afraid you wouldn't notice it. Stop playing hard to get when you... Let me say this one again. Stop playing hard to get when you're hard to want. Oh, okay. You're not the dumbest person in the world, but you better hope they don't die. (laughs) I I actually like that. Uh, A thought crossed your mind? It must have been a lonely journey. This is one that has been a cliche in our business for, I don't know, 70 years. You've got a great face for radio. 
How many times? How many times has would, that been used? They would say a face for radio and a voice for newspaper. Yeah, exactly. I'll bet if when a family friend brings you up to your parents, your parents change the subject. See, actually, that that's not even an insult. That's a legitimate thing in our family. So. I- <laughs> If my dog looked like you, I'd shave his butt and teach him to walk backward. Wow. Mm. How about I pay for your vasectomy? Mm. You are so dense, light bends around you. And there they are. And there they are. What you do know, you think? I don't... The, every, every one of those was so mean and so cutting. They were. Mm-hmm. I, prefer, I prefer the ways of my people... Like where I come from, somebody will say to you, hey, hey, what are you talking about? You can and, you know, it's kind of a cut. <laughs> what did yeah. you say? But it, but it gets it's, right to the point. It's yeah. kind of a cut, but it's not super personal. It's an invitation yeah. to an action I don't want to participate yeah. in. But, right. but it's not like a personal attack on my intelligence or appearance or whatever. I, I don't think like the, really mean cuts like that. I think the meanest one was the one from the teacher. Oh, that's in. A, that's not just mean. That's wrong. Yeah, it that's was wrong. inappropriate. That's right. All right, let's behave ourselves. It's Bob and Sherry. Get Lamar's reviews sent to your phone and qualify for a Fandango gift card. Text movie to eight 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 Bob Sherry. It is time now for the People's Movie Critic, <laughs> soon to be a newly graduated obedient school <laughs> dog daddy and his review of Suicide Squad starring Margot Robbie. What'd you think, Lamar? You know, don't confuse this with the first Suicide Squad that sucked, okay? Even with a great cast consisting of Will Smith, Jared Leto, Margot Robbie, and more, it was confusing all over the place, and it was just not fun to watch. Now, the blame can't be on Margot Robbie because she played the Harley Quinn character again in Birds of Prey, and it was great. So it has to be the writers and directors. This Suicide Squad, directed by James Gunn, is entertaining, and it's a blast to watch. Uh, It doesn't have that deep, intricate plot that the Marvel movies bring to the table, but if you're looking for a rip-roaring, action-packed good time, this is it. Now, the Suicide Squad is made up of imprisoned supervillains who are offered reduced sentences if they join Task Force X for super-secret government missions. Now, if they try to escape, they will be killed instantly by explosive devices that's implanted into their skulls. And this program is ran by Amanda Waller, who is played by Viola Davis, and she is awesome. And they're sent to this island to destroy what is a major threat to the U.S. as well as the rest of the world. Now, the team leader, Colonel Flagg, is played by Joel Kinnaman. And the team consists of Harley Quinn, a homicidal maniac, played by Robbie, Bloodsport, an assassin who's played by Idris Elba, Polka Dot Man, played by David Desmouchen, who shoots out polka dots. You got to see it to understand it. We also have Rat Catcher 2, who's played by Daniela Melchor, and she controls rats. And you got Peacemaker, another assassin, played by John Cena, who is in every movie that ever appears for the last three weeks, it seems like. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's hot right now. Now, all of these are just your run-of-the-mill supervillains. But then we have Nanoe, the king shark, who is a giant shark that walks upright and has two arms and is voiced by none other than Sylvester Stallone. This is genius (laughs) casting. We have a clip of what uh, Stallone sounds like as the giant shark. Does it talk? Book read. Wow. (laughs) Looks upside down. See that? It's pretending to read a book. So smart me. Enjoy books so much. I wear disguise. <laughs> oh, you're going to wear a disguise. See? Hey, he's learning Spanish. And what kind of disguise? Fake mustache. You still look exactly like yourself. It's the worst fake mustache I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> now, so according to uh, according to Gunn, he he asked him to do this, and he absolutely jumped on it. 
But I don't know if he approached him and says, I've got this shark. And I need it to sound slow and stupid. And you're the first person. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that went. I don't know. I, I, don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. It's don't brilliant know. casting, though. It, it, <laughs> it really, really is. is. There's also a character called the Weasel because he is a giant, bug-eyed, slobbering weasel. And it's crazy, okay? Now, <laughs> their mission is to capture the thinker, who's played by uh, Peter Capaldi, and to force him to get them into the building that ha- is housing the threat. Now, because this is an R-rated movie, the director was able to make the most violent and gory comic book movie so far. The violence and blood is so over the top, it's way more funny than it is shocking. And when the threat that they're going to neutralize is finally revealed, it is so 1950s horror movie silly, it is hilarious. Now, don't get me wrong. It is deadly, and the squad takes it very seriously, but that makes it even funnier. The movie's two hours and 12 minutes, rated R, and it has a couple of scenes after the movie, so just sit still. Don't go anywhere. Margot so is Robbie. The vi- is, yeah. the violence, is the violence cartoon violence, or what kind of violence when you say oh, no, it's, it's true. Bloody. It's true violence. I mean, it's true yeah. violence and people being ripped apart and all kinds of stuff, but the way they yeah. do it, it's more funny than anything else. Now, okay. Margot Robbie has this Harley Quinn character dialed in, and she wants to play it as long as she can. And the genius of this whole deal was bringing in Idris Elba, because he's one of the best dramatic actors of our time. It was just genius. And he plays this absolutely straight, which makes the movie funnier and more legit at the same time. Now, I mm-hmm. was really not excited about seeing this after the first one, but this is not Suicide Squad 2. It is a reboot. Evidently, it's a do-over after the first disaster. And after mm-hmm. seeing this, this is, there's definitely hope for the franchise. I think you're going to see a few more of these. It was fantastic. Oh, wow. My All score right, on this is five buds. That's how much Woo. money it was. Five Wowzers. buds. Yeah. Yes. That's five yes. buds. Yeah, very good. All right. All right, All right well, we folks, more don't go Lamar. anywhere. Yeah, don't yeah. go anywhere because Lamar, Lamar is proof <laughs> that it's never too late to go back to school. <laughs> and he's getting ready to graduate. We're so proud we're going to talk about next. It's Bob and Sherry. Get Lamar's reviews sent to your phone and qualify for a Fandango gift card. Text MOVIE to 888-BOB-SHERRY. If you are a regular listener to the Bob and Sherry Show, you know that Lamar and Carla got a dog. It's a standard poodle, isn't it? Yes, Is that- yes, yes. So yes. it's a beautiful, beautiful standard poodle. And uh, they were having a little trouble uh, getting the poodle to do exactly what uh, he needed to do. And so they decided to call in a dog trainer and then they <laughs> discovered that the training is not so much with the dog as it is with you it's exactly and right that, and that is what dog training is all about they don't they don't come in and just you know wave a magic wand they want you to get involved in it how did it go well I mean, like i say, we had a we had a lady come to our house and uh, we did a lot of stuff with her and it was great and but she suggested that we would because one of the things about going to a class is you've got other dogs in there, so they're distractions. Yeah. you got other dogs. Right. I mean, I could get the dog to do anything in the living room, but when you go outside and there's kids and dogs and whatever, then she loses her mind and she wants to go do all that <laughs> kind of stuff. So right. we, we, we took like a, a six-week uh, deal where we went once a week. And, yeah, you're exactly right, though. They're not teaching the dog nothing. They're teaching you something, and then in turn, you got to work on this all week long. And so we're graduating uh, next week. And so, congratulations. so proud of you both. Yep, 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 yep. We're doing one of the things is uh, place. Put her in place, and she sits down. She's got to stay there no matter what. So everything's going great, and she's staying there. And then the lady goes, well, "Let's try something new," and she comes out with a yellow tennis ball. And I'm like, "No, not the yellow <laughs> tennis ball. No, it is crack cocaine. I mean, crack cocaine." <laughs> She came over there and she bounced that ball one time and it was over with. She's just going, I said, not the tea. You could have brought a steak out. It wouldn't have been as much trouble as the yellow tennis ball. Because every day when I get home, because she's bored, because she don't have anything to do, I'm the playmate. So I throw a yellow tennis ball every day. And she catches it like 50 times every day. And I'm like, oh, my God. She goes, well, just know next week when you come to graduate, the yellow tennis ball will be here. And I'm like, great. So now I'm having to figure you know, it's, Yeah. Yeah. It's like a pop quiz. The yellow tennis ball was the pop quiz that we had not yeah. studied for. That is exactly yeah. what that was. 
So, but you know, so far so good. So, so what do you do uh, to uh, graduate with the yellow tennis ball situation? And w- what are the instructions so that the dog still stays in place? What will happen is everybody will put their dog in place on the mat or bed or whatever, and that she's supposed to stay there. And then all the handlers, us, all come to the middle of the room and just walk around. And all of the dogs have to stay where they're supposed to be and don't run out and nothing like that. And if a lady comes by and she's bouncing the tennis ball or whatever she's doing, they got to stay there. That's the deal. But so. what are you doing to teach your dog that? Well, I'm just well, I'm putting her in place constantly now. And now, in fact, when I would put her in place before, I would jump up and down and 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 do jumping jacks and everything to to get her to get excited or whatever. And if she starts to come off, I put her back on, make her stay, give her a treat, whatever, praise her, whatever. And so after a while, she starts figuring out it's better to stay than it is to go. And so. You know. It really does. It really does work. Mary uh, puts me in place. She's been doing that for the past <laughs> ten years. Well, there was, Lamar, there was I, just too- <laughs> I um, dated a dog trainer and went through dog training and discovered that my dogs weren't. The, my dogs were taught nothing. It was all one hundred percent me, the owner, and I was kind of right. terrible at it because I, I had done enough homework in my life and did not want to do homework <laughs> with my dogs. Yeah. But I have to say the place, the place thing worked. What do you think is the biggest skill that you learned at obedience school for you, not the dog? I think to be in tune, probably to be in tune with the dog, to recognize what's sort of going on. You know what I'm saying? Because she's trying to figure it out, but I, you know, I'm, I, I think probably that. But my favorite thing is the place. The place is the best thing ever. I mean, that's sorry, the wait, best thing. Wait, what's that? What's that? My niece Brittany wants to know if they can teach her husband Danny any of the skills you just learned, <laughs> how to be in tune with his wife and child. <laughs> be responsive. Yeah, that's what we need. We need that kind of school. Well, I'm so proud of you. Are you going to have a little graduation party? You're going to get a little present, maybe get you that um, that griddle thing that you've been yeah, wanting. Yeah, that I, I, gave I think. You. I, well, that's my whole point. When we can't take the picture, I'm going to get her to push out of the way. I'm taking the diploma. I'm holding the diploma my own self. I'm not sharing it with nobody because <laughs> I'm the one that I, learned it. I was everything. the worst. I was like Sherry. I was the worst. And you know why? I just, I too soft a heart to tell the dog, you know, not to play with the ball. I, I would go, no, you can't play. Oh, come on. He wants to play with the ball. And, and it's done. <laughs> I, I was just, I was yeah. terrible at it. So I admire you for doing that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Congratulations. So far, so good. We'll see. I ain't graduated yet, though. <laughs> well, yeah, don't get cocky. I and love then, your humility. That dang yellow ball. And, and that the, dang yeah, yellow and ball. And then I graduate school. <laughs> Five icy buds for Suicide Squad. The People's Movie Critic loved it, and you can trust his reviews because he's almost a graduate of dog obedience school. <laughs> That's right. That's a stamp of approval. All right, coming up, what happens when you get a compliment to your brain and does a fake compliment do the same thing we're gonna find out it's bob and cherry bob and cherry sponsored by bank of america customized cash rewards credit card you can earn three percent cash back on online shopping making the essentials even more rewarding here's bob and cherry bob and cherry go all right so one of the big things that you can see online are unboxing videos and of course product reviews here is a dad giving an honest review of his own two-month-old baby son. I'm back with another review today. Um, hey guys, I'm back with another review today. Um, this is my little boy. I just got him about two months ago. Good quality hair. The cheeks are very chunky and very kissable. He does this little <laughs> cute little thing when he poke out his look like this. Makes you want to kiss him even more. The clothes, I got it for around 20, 30 bucks. You can get clothes from anywhere, diapers as well. Um, overall, he's a pretty good baby until he's hungry. He's, he, he go crazy. But um, I recommend babies for any family, for starting families. If you already have a family, I recommend more babies. You know what I'm saying? You can get them from around, you know, three grown-up transactions. A day, if you know what I mean. Um, it only takes one, one transaction, one grown-up <laughs> transaction can get you a baby. Um, what I rec- where I have more, I don't know, but um, I have him. 
<laughs> and he's the cutest little I've baby. I've never heard of that before. A baby <laughs> review. Just, he's just sitting there like, All right, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when one of our kids was uh, like younger, um, Zane, when Zane was a little bit younger, Zane loved a good unboxing video. He would watch like uh, somebody unbox a MacBook on YouTube. And I watched that one day. And I've seen, you know, um, my my uh, my other daughter loves a thrift haul video. She'll watch what people, what other people, complete strangers in other parts of the world, bought that day at a thrift shop, right? And so I'm watching this one, watching computers get opened, and this one, watching thrift store stuff get dumped out of a bag. And I thought to myself, "Hey, NBC, good luck. Like these these kids are not interested in must see TV on Thursday night. They're watching some guy named Alex in Omaha opening a laptop." They're not going to be watching your sitcoms or anything. S- seriously, else. I mean, is that a thing? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Opening yeah. up boxes. Yes, but- unboxing something, something that's brand new. I've watched them because because I, I'll, I've bought something and I'll go, hmm, I wonder how to use this. So I'll go on YouTube and I'll put it in, and then there'll be some guy who's unboxing it and showing you how it works. No, I get the showing you how it works thing because I've seen those. Um, well, but just, it's it's a thing to watch somebody open up a box. Unbox it, yeah, because um, think about it. Think, you know how there are certain, th- like popping bubble pop, bubble, uh, what do you call that? You know what bubble, I'm talking bubble about. Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap, yeah. Wrap. Mm-hmm. You know how popping those bubbles is weirdly satisfying? Satisfying, you know? yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Or opening a brand new pack of gum. I, I once had a smoker tell me that his favorite part of smoking was opening a brand new box of cigarettes, right? There was something so satisfying in that ritual. Unboxing- oh, on a, on, a Saturday, on a Saturday morning when I used to play golf at 10 o'clock with the same foursome, getting a new uh, sleeve of golf balls, even if I had some, you know, golf balls that have only been used like a few hits in my bag, the idea of the crackle of the opening of a brand new sleeve of three golf balls is so satisfying. Well, now you know. And I'm not the only guy. I've heard other guys say that too. Now you know why unboxing videos are so appealing. And you probably, and and I don't think you're ever going to be this bored, by the way. If you were bored, you could probably kill an hour or two watching golf sleeves get unboxed on YouTube. But I, I feel confident that you're never, Bob Lacey, going to be that bored. But yeah, no. there's something about, and certain kinds of objects getting unboxed are extra mm-hmm. satisfying. Like you watch somebody unbox like a top of the line, super, super expensive macbook the kind the the one that you're never going to have like even if you have a macbook be honest you have the opening level tier macbook only like design professionals and rich people buy like the super sleek fully like loaded up macbook pro and you know how those apple boxes are just so aesthetically pleasing yeah now now imagine you're just watching somebody very carefully open it and take this beautiful brush silver sleek machine out and take all of the like foam protector sheets and stuff off of it. I can see, I mean, I, I can't see watching more than one at a time, but I can see the appeal for sure. You're, you're right though about how things have changed with entertainment because not that long ago, 30 years ago, maybe – Not even that long ago, if you were a really clever and talented person, you might be able to write for a TV show. So you go to Brown University and you're in a frat and you're a funny guy and you belong to the college uh, newspaper. And then you get out there and you get hired by The Tonight Show because you can write some good jokes. And now you're writing a situation comedy But then it gets canceled because of things like people watching videos of stuff being opened. You must you must say to yourself, what? I have I have these gifts and I'm getting cut by this. Yeah, but there's more opportunities for television writing than there's ever been at any point. Well, there are a lot of shows. You're right. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what really must hurt people's feelings. You've you've gone to Juilliard. You're so talented. You've been touched by God with this amazing gift, and and you can't get your big break. But a guy just reviewed his own two month old baby and has six million views. Yeah, I know. I know. And by the way, if you want to see those babies' cheeks, they really are something. We're going to post that video up on our Facebook right now. Coming up, what happens to your brain 
when somebody pays you a compliment. It's Bob and Sherry. Get Lamar's reviews sent to your phone and qualify for a Fandango gift card. Text MOVIE to 888-BOB-SHERRY. It's really interesting how people can make a living. They can make a living doing things that, you know, I never would have thought of. For instance, there's a guy called Vince the Sign Guy. Have you ever uh, driven past, it might be a church or it might be uh, a tire store, but they, they have a sign outside and usually will have the name of the business or the uh, or. Or, or whatever the church is, and, and they'll have a clever question or a saying or a joke. Have you ever driven, you know, everybody's yeah, seen those yeah, things yeah, at yeah. one time or another. Yeah. Well, there's there's somebody named Vince the Sign Guy, and evidently you contract with Vince and he sends you a different one every day. And obviously it's not just you. He's He's coming up with these clever things and he's selling it to, you know, businesses and organizations all over the country. It's a really clever way to make a living. Here is the latest one and my favorite, and it's uh, in front of the Indian Hills Community Center. I think the Indian Hills Community Center might be in Colorado. It looks like Colorado. There's snow on the ground. Am I getting older or is the supermarket finally playing great music? <laughs> I love that. And I have the next- to say, I have to say yeah. on that subject, the first time you're pushing your buggy down the cereal aisle and you hear the cure, you realize, <laughs> uh oh, it's <laughs> true. Uh oh, it's really true. I know it. It's interesting what they choose. You know, different supermarkets will have different era of music, and you wonder, are, are have they done you know studies? research like the average person coming here is 40 so you're going to play a particular type of music or do they just kind of guess at it or just or, or just corporate if it's a big supermarket oh, chain do, do they do all the studies and they say now nah, the average person here we think is 50 we're going to play this music there's no guesswork involved they they're probably using a muzak service and there's more yeah. science in muzak than there is at nasa ain't no guessing involved max am i right that's right yeah and then you go into somewhere like Whole Foods and they're playing classical music because they they want a different sort of feel. It's aspirational. Class- yeah. 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 Well, yeah. you feel a little bit better about paying three times as much for lettuce if you're listening to Chopin <laughs> as you do <laughs> right. when you're listening to ZZ Top. I mean, that's kind of like what they're thinking, right? Yeah. Another one of the signs says, I hate peer pressure and so should you. <laughs> so anyway vince vince is uh is making some money on that um i was just reading about i didn't know about this but apparently you know those like there are men's magazines that aren't dirty like maxim right there's yeah. a handful of men's magazines around the world that are not porn but they're you know they're magazines for men i right. did not know that the models on the covers of those magazines often pay to uh-huh. be on there did, i did you knew that max i didn't I did know, know that i saw the article just You're came kidding. out about that but i did know you get you how get, much do they pay well that i don't know but i know that you get a a, a publicist who's trying to push your career and that's one yeah. of the things that happens is they get you on the copy of the cover of the magazine to help you get other work uh, a, yeah maxim model, is perfect because they don't use celebrities they just use really sexy looking like women beautiful women i thought yeah. they were finding those women and paying those women to be on the cover but no there's a, a woman in uh, santa monica named bella baez she's paid twelve thousand dollars to be on the cover of maxim you I know d- that's I had a lot of no money idea that's a lot of money and yet i think that that's probably if you're pushing a career That's probably a pretty good deal because you're going to be in supermarkets all over the country. She said that um, in order to come up with the $12,000, she had to sell all the Chanel handbags her ex-boyfriend bought her. And I was like, oh, my heart is breaking. My heart is breaking. One, you look like this. Two, your ex-boyfriend showered you with Chanel handbags. Like, and he's an ex-boyfriend. The, the rest of us, when we talk about paying an ex-boyfriend, bail bondsman is often in the sentence. Not Chanel uh, be, handbag be interesting, and Maxim cover. Be interesting to see how many of the women who pay for these uh, covers actually make it in show business. Yeah, like what or happens next? Or if next. it's a vanity sort of thing, like they've got a rich husband or a boyfriend or something. 
or they came into money and they just want to be famous. And this, uh, who's who has an ex boyfriend that gives you multiple Chanel handbags? Yeah. Damn, yeah, it's it, this her. world. This world is not a fair world. Straight ahead, what's it like to get a compliment? What happens to you on your in your brain and inside your body? And does a fake compliment do the same thing as a real compliment? Find I don't have next. the answer to that. <laughs> Find out next. It's Bob and Sherry. You read it once. I don't believe that. And then you read it again. I can't believe this. It's Bob and Sherry's. I believe this. Shit. I cannot believe this. Shit. You know, Bob. You have a very warm voice that is sexy without being creepy or threatening. Did you know that? No, but thank you for saying that. You do. I practice on it because, uh, you know, I'm naturally creepy and (laughs) I've been fighting it. it. (laughs) And Max, your creativity goes unpraised by us far too often. And we notice it and the audience knows it and we should call it out more. And Doc, let me just say that having you join the show has been so critical to our sanity and and success because you've forced us to be better at what we do. You're organized and smart and you have great ideas. And intuitive. as a result, you're intuitive. And as a result, we're all kind of working together more seamlessly than we have in a long time. So um, on behalf of uh, Max and Doc, uh, what do you want? Here's the thing. Um, compliments act on your brain the same way as a paycheck does. It lights up the same section of your brain as a monetary reward. Hmm. What your brain looks like on a sincere compliment is absolutely astounding. And that's what we're talking about right here. But that said, an insincere compliment, somebody just kind of like buttering you up or, you know, dumping a bunch of words uh, salad on you in an attempt to ingratiate themselves or get on your good side backfires in a very, very big way. So even though your brain lights up on a compliment the same way it does on a cash reward or a paycheck, yeah, you can't pay your bills with compliments, but compliments, sincere compliments, not only activate that part of your brain, but they can make you healthier. Um, people who receive a genuine and sincere compliment from another person, they perform better at everything that they do afterward, which is so interesting to think about. It is, and it makes sense too. I've just noticed that if a compliment has the same effect on me as a paycheck, I must be getting fewer and fewer compliments than I did a few years ago. And you, and that's true. You are. I mean, there's no question about it because your your um, your environment is different than it was. Yeah. You're not yeah. you're not in a building with a bunch of people that are saying, "Hey, Bob, looking good," or whatever it would be. So, um, how does how do compliments um, how do compliments work on making people more agreeable? So that's what they looked at. They said if we if we praise our employees in a sincere way. Are they more likely to be um, better workers? And the and the the finding was really interesting that when someone gets a genuine compliment, they are more likely to respond by doing something helpful, um, a favor, an act of service, a courtesy, a kindness. But mm-hmm. a fake compliment, an insincere compliment, false flattery is not only more noticeable than the person thinks it is, but it makes you trust the person giving you the compliment less. So when someone is really laying it on thick, you recognize that they're insincere. You know that the compliment is insincere. And you know that in that moment, they're full of it. But you, your brain very subtly puts a check mark in the box that this person is not to be trusted at all going forward. I can I completely agree with that, and I can give you an example, and I think um, you'll remember because you and I talked about this. There was a guy we we used to work with, and I, I he's a nice person, but um, I just thought he was a real phony. And he was throwing roses to everybody. That was his thing. If he threw enough roses, everybody would love him. Well, he took up golf at one point in his life. And I was playing a lot of golf back then. And so he would bump into me and he would ask me about, you know, how long have you been playing? What kind of clubs do you use? You know, and it was fine. I'd, I'd talk to him about it and we'd discuss it. And then one day at the coffee area, I'm, I'm standing there and he, and he had been playing now for two or three months. 
And he said to me, you know, I just love playing golf. And let me tell you something, Bob Lacey, I would not be into this game if not for you. (laughs) I'm, come on. It's not like I'm semi-pro. I'm not on a tour. I'm not a, a great golfer. I think it, back then I was like a 12 or a 13 handicap. But he said that to me, that I was the reason. I was his inspiration. I only talked to him about it a couple of times. From that point on, I didn't believe a word that guy said. It's gross. You know, when somebody is like laying it on really thick, it's just super yeah. gross. And it yeah. makes, it doesn't make you feel good. It's the opposite of a sincere compliment. A right. false, false flattery makes you feel um, uneasy and, and a right. little bit, a little bit slimy. And it makes you look at that other person as very untrustworthy. And there are certain, there are certain things where I think people mean well, but it's gross. Like, for example, I absolutely despise despise when a man addresses me as young lady because I am not a lady and I will not be addressed as such. I do not like <laughs> that at all. It took me a second. That, that is such a Sherry Lynch right there. <laughs> I do not like that at all. Um, I do, and I don't, I, I know that they think they're being complimentary and it's yeah, like yeah. back all the way off chief. That's gross. And yeah. also what you're, when you say that to me, not only are it's you, it's controlling. Incom- you're incorrectly categorizing me, but you're diminishing what I actually am, which is right. your, your peer. Right, exactly. It's, it's um, so, so yes, yeah, so be on the lookout. Be on the lookout today. Oh, and by the way, if you can pay someone a sincere compliment, now that right. you know what it does to their brain and body and their whole day and maybe even their whole life, like, would it kill you to do it? Don't keep the words in your mouth. Tell somebody that they did a great job or that you love their haircut. Or that they're an incredible dad or whatever it is. Like, go ahead and get the words out your mouth. Sherry, I love even a phony compliment. I might know that it's (laughs) phony. I know it still lights up my brain. I won't trust the person, but I'm still going to have my brain lit up by it. Well, I will tell you that the compliments I gave the three of you to open this feature were very sincere. And you know that. Because I'll be the first person. (laughs) I'll be the first person, Bob, to let you know when you're doing something wrong. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'll post this on Facebook and you can go check it out. It's Bob and Sherry. And now on the Bob and Sherry Show, it's another exciting episode of Things Bob Didn't Know. Yeah, and we're going to look at the uh, World War I era. Very quickly, I got two things that I had no idea uh, were true. Listen to this one. Oh, man, this is, I would hate to go out this way. The last French soldier to die in World War I was killed 15 minutes before the ceasefire. He was delivering a message. He was delivering a message to his unit. What was the message? The message was that soup would be served for lunch that day. Oh, no. 15 minutes. You know what, Bob? The note is about soup. If reincarnation is real, that was one of us. I just know I it think was. it may have been. I feel I sick. I'm having like a I deja know. vu. Like, Bob, Bob, okay, here's the menu for lunch today. It's tomato soup. The troops are going to love it. Can you run that across the field? Glad to do it, Sherry. Glad to do it. Oh, my God. There, there were soldiers in the Civil War that died months <laughs> after the surrender because That's they just true. hadn't gotten the yeah. word yet. They hadn't gotten the word, yeah. So the second one, this is interesting, uh, that has to do with World War One, which, of course, you know, not a history, history bump, buff. It's around, what, 1917? Wasn't that when it began? It began, World- I think, in 1914 and, and 14, ended yeah. in 1918. Right. Um, it boosted the modern bra market because the U.S. War Industries Board asked American women in 1917 to stop buying corsets because corset frames were mostly made of metal, which was needed for ammunition and other military supplies. So at that point, the corset, which you only, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, how long ago were those used? Well, about a hundred and some odd years ago, um, that was thrown out and somebody came up with the idea of the bra. Can we talk please? Because the bra industry is in trouble. Women what? abandoned their bras during the pandemic, and a lot of them aren't going back. 
And Is that bra right? sales, yeah, I was just reading about this the other night. Bra sales uh-huh. are way, way down. Because you know the bra like, ads that yeah. I see on the bra ads that I see on TV, um, I don't know, you know exactly how they're constructed, but they're pitched that there's there's no metal in it, that it's uh, it's strictly some sort of fabric that does the job. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that is that a new thing? Is metal gone now completely? For no, most, there. Uh, no, nah, there are metal underwires on a lot of bras, but there are companies oh, yeah. that are using like high tech performance materials. Like you see, you know, swimmers in the Olympics wearing that that yeah. give you the same support and lift as an underwire without the actual pokey wire. The problem is, is that you had women abandoning bras and then they don't want to go back. So a lot of bra companies are going, okay, we're going to make a bra that gives you the the benefits of a bra, but doesn't feel like a bra, which is about time, right? You know, I was going to say, why it. did they not do that before? Well, why, why was that not on the market before with a competing company, right? Some companies have been doing that all along, like Cup and Third Love. They make bras yeah. that are designed to be comfortable, right? Yeah, so yeah. The, this, is how, this is how much you know that the bra thing is real. There's a meme that's circulating that goes something like this. Wait, we're wearing bras again? I thought we had a deal. <laughs> because people don't want to people don't want to go yeah. back yeah you know? well i wonder I mean, you know when people do go back i wonder if that's going to be a thing in offices i i wear one most days i'm not wearing one right now and i'm not sad about it <laughs> so we'll see i think if you go back to an office you have to probably probably yeah, no probably. probably all right that's it things bob didn't know this is bob and sherry now let's open up the bob and sherry archive vault so there's breaking news that there's no such thing as a crazy cat lady there's no evidence to support that uh crazy cat ladies are depressed anxious or alone that um crazy cat ladies are fine and i'm really glad about that because i had an incredibly embarrassing experience yesterday afternoon and i know that at the end of it when the phone call ended the man on the other end turned to his co-workers and said Y'all are not going to believe the crazy cat lady I just talked to. Why? So here's what happened. So you know that I've taken up um, a new hobby. My sister wife, Joni, has gotten me into needlepoint work. It's yoga for the mind. It's very good. I calm down and I've needed to be calm because I've had a lot going on in my life. It's been very, very emotional. And so I've finished my first project. The 100 Year Pillow is done. And I'm making something for my daughter, Olivia, for Christmas for her dorm room. And I can't post a picture of it because I don't want her to see it. But she's not listening to this. So I'll describe it. It's a big pillow. And it is an enormous, whimsical cat face surrounded by rays of pink and gold light shooting out from behind its head. I thought you said there was no such thing as a crazy cat lady. And on its neck is an Elizabethan ruff. You know, those big, lacy, stiff collars Uh like people wore back in the old days? Yeah. It's so whimsical and cute. So I... Is there a pattern that you follow? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a canvas and I stitch it. And I... This was a discontinued... It's amazing to me this was discontinued. (laughs) (laughs) Because, like, doesn't every home need this? But it was discontinued and I got such a deal online uh-huh. with this company <laughs> that bet. sells these things. Yeah, I bet. Anyway, it came in the mail and I was so excited and I hid it because I didn't want to start working on it till she had gone to school because it's going to be a surprise. I took it with me in my bag thinking that after I dropped her off at her dorm and went back to my $45 a night chalk outline motel, that instead of crying, um, I would work on my whimsical cat pillow. So yesterday, I go looking for it to start it. I can't find it anywhere. Mm. Tore the house up. Tore the car up. Mm. What, I mean, I looked everywhere. And I finally... And now I'm I know in, it's not stolen because who would... I mean, now, you know? but now I'm in, <laughs> I'm in tears, which it takes very little. Like, if you don't pass me the salt <laughs> fast enough, I'll cry right now. But now I'm in tears. And I go to my husband last night. And I'm like, <laughs> my cat in the Elizabethan rough needlepoint kit. It's gone. I can't find it. It's discontinued. And he went, I'll be damned. It's discontinued. (laughs) So he's like, did you call the place where you stayed? No. Why don't you call them? So I call the Chalk Outline Motel and they answer, good evening. It's the Chalk Outline Motel. How can I help you? I said, hey, I stayed there um, last uh, Friday and I was in room 220 
And I'm pretty sure I left behind a large, whimsical cat needlepoint kit. The cat has big green eyes and kind of like rays of light shooting out of its head. And one of those fancy collars that you see in old paintings. Pause. Long pause. Pause, yeah. And he said, hmm. What did you say that was? <laughs> and so I described it again. I said, would you mind checking to see if um, it's in like lost and found? And he said, ma'am, I'm pretty sure I'd have spotted that by now. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, could you just please go look? Because it's going to be a surprise for my, my daughter. So he goes and looks. And after a long time, he comes back and he said, there is nothing anywhere in this building that resembles that. You know, I'm surprised if if it was a phone charger or a watch or something like that, I could see that getting gone. But that's a specific thing that, I don't know, an employee of the hotel would want to have. So I was crushed. So have you found it? I, I got off the phone with him and I went to Kevin and now I'm full on. I'm like, yeah. and it's been discontinued and now she won't have a Christmas present. And he's like, woman, it's got to be in this house somewhere. And sure enough, he found it. He found, where was it? I, I guess I had, on my rush to get out the door to get her moved into her dorm, I had just put it in the laundry room and then yeah, some yeah, stuff yeah. got put on top of it. Yeah. Have you ever had something that um, you, you wanted to hide, right? And, and and you don't want to lose it, but you hit it so well you can't find but it. Even St. Anthony can't the, find the, it. Even St. Anthony can't find it. I know. So there are two pieces of good news here. One is I found my whimsical cat head radiating light in Elizabethan rough, and I'm going to make it for Christmas. And the other piece of good news is... Uh, there's no evidence to support the stereotype of the crazy cat lady feeling pretty, <laughs> Not at all. Feeling pretty Not good at all. about myself right if now. I, by the way, if I were driving down the highway and I was looking for a motel or a hotel and I saw the actual name of the hotel as the Chalk Outline Hotel... <laughs> I would be tempted. You sure you would? You know what? Yeah. I, wouldn't you? Yeah. I think I would. So it all, all right. worked out. You can hear more from the Bob and Sherry archives at bobandsherry.com. The Fun Size Podcast, the shareable bite size portion of the show. Get it by texting Fun Size to 888 Bob Sherry. I learned something so cool. I'm so excited to tell you guys because we're all big fans of the movie Pulp Fiction, which, um, when did you say that came out, Max? Na- 1994. 1994. Oh my gosh. So we're coming up on however many years that would be six, 20. We're going to be on the 30th anniversary of Pulp Fiction before you know it. Wow. Quentin Tarantino has been in the news because he just sort of casually dropped in an interview that um, his mom told him his writing career was a joke when he was 12 years old. And he's never, uh, he's held on to it ever since. He's never going to give her a nickel. We just talked about this the other day in the show. He's like, she didn't get any money. She didn't get a house. She's not getting an Elvis Cadillac. She gets nothing from me. So I guess because Tarantino's back in the news, um, there have been little uh, things about him scattered throughout the media verse. And I was reading an article about um, how many years he spent crafting Pulp Fiction, that actually he was working with his writing partner, Roger Avery. It's the only time somebody on a Tarantino film, I think, has gotten equal credit. They were working on Pulp Fiction for so long that the first section of it that Tarantino wrote became the movie Reservoir Dogs. And oh, the, is that right? And the movie that Roger wrote became that incredible scene with Christopher Walken about the watch in Pulp Fiction. Remember? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's how many, they worked on it forever before it became a movie. Anywho, in Pulp Fiction, um, and you see this throughout Quentin Tarantino movies, he makes up his own brands, like Big Kahuna Burgers, for example, or that um, bad, bad wolf, uh, big wolf dog food that's in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Wow. Right, right. Red Apple Cigarettes, the brand that features prominently in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, makes its first appearance in Pulp Fiction. That's how long that right? he's been planning these little like Easter eggs throughout his movies. So yeah, Red, yeah. Ap- Red Apple Cigarettes is a make-believe cigarette brand, and Leonardo DiCaprio plays a guy named an actor named Rick Dalton in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He was a big success, but now then he he kind of like fell onto hard times, and he's struggling to be taken seriously as an actor. He's struggling for his big break. And the red apple thing is just a tiny throwaway in Pulp Fiction. And it's mm-hmm. it's a slightly bigger throwaway in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But at the very end of the movie, there's a 
fake TV commercial starring Rick Dalton, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, for these cigarettes. Because, of course, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood takes place back when cigarettes could advertise on television. Yeah, yeah so the early did, 60s. Mm-hmm. If you didn't see the movie, here is Leonardo DiCaprio as Rick Dalton doing the, the commercial for the imaginary brand Red Apple. Hi, this is Rick Dalton, better known as Bounty Hunter Jake Cahill, speaking on behalf of Red Apple Cigarettes. Now, I smoke Red Apples, been smoking them for years, but since the Red Apple Tobacco Company's been around since 1862, you'll see Jake Cahill smoke Red Apple, too. Now, back in Jake's day, Red Apple came in a pouch, and he had to roll his own. But today, Red Apple comes factory rolled for the best drag with the best tobacco flavor, with less burn on your throat than any other non-filter cigarette. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. That's the way a cigarette should taste. (laughs) Better drag, more flavor, less throat burn. That's the red apple way. So look for this life-size standee of me, Jake Cahill, wherever fine red apple tobacco products are sold. Take a bite and feel all right. Take a bite of a red apple. (laughs) Tell them Jake sent you. (laughs) And cut. All right, this is You know, it's it's so interesting that part of the part of the spiel is that there's less burn on your throat. Exactly. Less <laughs> throat know? burn. <laughs> yeah, less throat burn. <laughs> You're still gonna have some, but it's gonna be less. What does that I'll tell will, you? I will post that uh, for anyone that hasn't seen the movie. I'll go ahead and post that fake uh, cigarette commercial starring Leonardo DiCaprio on the Bob and Sherry Facebook, and this is Bob and Sherry. Congratulations, Sherry Lynch, named one of the most influential women in radio again this year. It's Bob and Sherry. Hello there, everybody. It's time now to play everyone's favorite game, I Wish I Didn't Know, where you guess which strange or disgusting fact is true. Let's meet our contestant for today. She's an aspiring radio performer from Macon, Georgia. Sherry Woo! Lynch. Hi, Sherry. Yay. Hi, Bob. Yay. I'm so, so first time so player. Glad ah! Yeah, yeah. Well, tell us a little about yourself, Sherry. Well, I think probably the most interesting thing about me is I was born with an extra thumb. It was actually growing out of the top of my hand. And so... My dad wanted me to keep it, but my mom had the pediatrician remove it. And uh, my grandma kept it wrapped in like a little handkerchief inside a box with my first Holy Communion cards. Super awesome. Yeah, we pretty much uh, got that scene and we'll never forget it. But you know what, Sherry? I can't believe that's what you came up with. And for the audience, we did not rehearse this. And here's the first question for you. A man in India owns the record for... The most fingers and toes on a human being. No, I can't believe you were talking about oh your past. Gosh. Yes, this human calculator must find it impossible to buy gloves and socks because he's got this many working digits. Is it A, twenty-two, B, forty-three, C, thirty-one digits, or D, twenty-eight? How many fingers and toes do you think, Sherry? I don't know the answer, so I'm using. I'm trying to use my Sicilian second sight, and I'm going to go with 28. That's exactly right. Yeah. He had 28, 28 fingers and toes. We don't know how many toes and how many fingers, but if you add them all up, um, that's what the man was doing. Y'all, we got to hustle out of here because my my psychic sense is so strong today. It is lottery <laughs> ticket day. Yeah, you're right about that. I can't believe that. You know, having 28, especially if you had extra fingers, that guy must have had an incredible golf uh, grip. You know what I mean? To have another three fingers on the golf club, that would be fantastic. I I don't know, because I don't know what a golf grip could do. But I'll tell you what, with his kids, they had extra leeway when they were being naughty. I'm going to count. That's one. 
That's two. <laughs> that's three. That's true. That's and the that's kids true. are like, okay, okay, we're up to nine. Am I ever going to get in trouble? That's awesome. Hey, li- hey, listen. Hey, the missus probably didn't mind that either. If you know what I mean, right? Or sh- or she did. If you or know maybe what I she mean. did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Depends how you uh, how you look at it. Uh, okay, uh, Sherry, congratulations! You've won our grand prize, and it's a model of Jeff Bezos's spaceship, perfect in every detail, and it comes with two D cell batteries and is guaranteed to take you into space just like Jeff went. Woo! Yep, congratulations! That's coming your way, and that's it, folks. Join us next time for I wish I didn't know, and remember. Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for a drink. Bye-bye, everybody. It's Bob and Sherry. Get Lamar's reviews sent to your phone and qualify for a Fandango gift card. Text MOVIE to 888-BOB-SHERRY. This is so interesting. I saw this on Ranker. They uh, took a look at movies and analyzed what products skyrocketed right after the movie was released. Very popular movies. What products skyrocketed right after it? So I'm going to ask the three of you, Doc and Max and Sherry, to take a guess at what product you think um, really took off because the movie presented it in such a positive way. Okay? Okay. The first one is E.T. Reese's Pieces. Bingo. Went through the roof. They were doing okay. Peanut butter flavored candy from Hershey's. Sales went up after E.T. 65%. That's a jump. Number two, Toy Story 2. What what product increased after Toy Story 2? Mr. Um, Potato Head? No, that's a good guess. I'm looking at a, a picture of Mr. Light, Potato no. Head. in the. Well, Say what, Doc? Uh, I was going to say Buzz Lightyear, but that would be popular for the first one. And and Slinkies, yeah. the Slinky Dog oh, would be the popular. Second one. Oh, I'm toy trying story to remember two. all my toy. I'm going through the plot lines of all my Toy Stories. It's a classic 50s, 60s child's toy. It's hard to use. At least um, I've o- I've only I think had one once. One of my they brought it back, and I gave it to a, one of my kids, and, and they couldn't deal. A pogo with it. stick. Etch a sketch. Oh, etch a sketch. I was never good at that. Okay, this one is going to be uh, is going to be. It, it's sad in many ways, but it's going to be easy to do. What product went through the roof? And I use "product" in quotes after 101 Dalmatians. Um, hmm. I have. I don't have the first Dalmatians. Uh, oh, the dog. You know, that's so obvious. I didn't even think about that. The dog, and you know, in in uh, Cruella, which is the latest 101 Dalmatians. The the dogs are not even they're barely even mentioned because it's a, it, the story is about the you know Cruella and how why did she turn out this way it's yeah, more yeah. about mother daughter sort of uh, sort of thing going on there but the saddest thing is after uh, Glenn Close starred as Cruella de Vil people wanted Dalmatians and so they were buying them left and right. And then they were trying to have other people adopt them, try to give them away because they found out that when they became dogs, they're not quite as cuddly. They're as, rambunctious. They require a lot of exercise. They're, they there's do. A, there's a lot of care involved with they're, them. Yeah. I've read that we, they're not awesome with little kids, which would be a problem too, I'm guessing. Yeah. Right? My ex and I adopted one once. Uh, <laughs> it was killing chickens on Nantucket Island where one of her friends lived. And they were going to put the dog down, and uh, we took it on. And my Siberian Husky went out of her mind, and it didn't work out, and we found another home for it. All right, so let's go to uh, Top Gun. What went through the roof after Top Gun? Leather it's not, bomber it's, jackets. Uh, that's. I was just going to say, it's it's not a product. It's something oh. that happened. Oh, enrollment in the enlistment in the Air Force. In the Navy's aviation program. That's exactly right. This this one is going to be tough because you could go a lot of different ways. Torn off-the-shoulder sweatshirts became popular after, after you got it. I, I flipped yeah. it around that way. Yep. After V for Vendetta, what became popular? The, the mask? The mask. The Guy Fawkes mask. Yep. That's exactly right. Guy Fawkes, of course, was the uh, person who tried to uh, overthrow his 1605 revolutionary who was uh, arrested for uh, trying to burn down the British Parliament, and he was executed. 
What became popular after Dirty Harry? Magnum gun? Yep. <gasps> 44 Magnum became popular. It was not a thing. As soon as that movie came out, uh, gun owners wanted to have one. Risky business. Um, the Porsche? No. Dancing in your underpants? Tidy uh, whities was, That was the one I was going to guess at. You're the, close. The band Tangerine Dream. Like, I, I don't know what no. I was going to um, I'm trying to think of whether there's anything else in there. The, Wayfarer sunglasses. Ray-Bans. Ray-Bans. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wayfarer sunglasses was the one. Um, the Italian Job. What increased after the remake of The Italian uh, Job? Mini Coopers? Went right through the roof. Went right through the roof. They rose 20% that year. Uh, what happens... <laughs> After uh, the release of three Fast and Furious films, what happens in our country? Well, street racing? Tickets. Speeding tickets. Speeding oh. tickets went up. Every time one was released, speeding tickets went up all around the United States. The movie Sideways about going to uh, the wine country with your buddy just before he gets, gets married. It uh, hurt the sales of Merlot. Merlot and uh, Pinot sales rose because one of the characters said, we will not drink Merlot. Yeah. That God, that really ticked off <laughs> Merlot growers in California. It was a nightmare. You're gonna. Uh, most of us uh, did not see this in the movie theaters and maybe have never seen it, but there's a famous movie called Roman Holiday, and it stars Gregory Peck and Audrey Hepburn. She's a European princess. He's an American newspaper reporter. They meet and fall in love in Rome. And what kicked in sales-wise after that movie? I don't even have a guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, is it something as obvious as vacations travel? to Italy? No, no. Vespa motor scooters. Oh, yeah. Because uh, they were, you know, having a good time around town in a Vespa. Um Rentals of budget trucks increased after what movie? This is this is really tough. Rentals of it, budget trucks? Of budget trucks increased because of a scene at the end of a really well-known movie. When Harry met Sally? No, Not quite. They no. don't move in together. No. I have Catherine, no idea. Catherine O'Hara is trying to get home, and uh, she hitches a ride with a alone. traveling polka band, which is led by John Candy. It's Home Alone. I would never have home guessed alone. that. Yeah. That was the toughest one. And evidently, it just was a great ad for budget, and it went through the roof. So, there you go. A few things driven by the movies. This is Bob and Sherry. Hey, thank you so much for listening to the Bob and Sherry podcast and the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. We would love if you would subscribe, rate and review, and share it with a friend on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you go. And thank you again for listening.